Would you believe it if I told you that this was GoPro footage and that I pulled focus on GoPro footage? That's a Hero 10, this is a Hero 12. And we're gonna talk about that today in the video. And I'm gonna show you how I did it. How cool is that? Welcome back to the channel, my friends. This is Road Reality where I'm trying to make GoPro footage a little more cinematic. Let's get in the studio and figure this out. That was neat, right? That was GoPro footage that I used the DaVinci Resolve Studio depth map on. So that's what we're gonna go into today. That was a GoPro, that was uh, my Hero 10. So this should work on any action camera, really. And most phones that don't really have a depth of field, Maybe they do, maybe they don't, maybe you want to enhance it. Should work on that. Let me know in the comments below if you try this out on some phone footage and it works. I think that would be pretty cool, but it is a studio only feature. So if you haven't ponied up 295 big ones, US dollars, for DaVinci Resolve Studio, then this feature is unavailable to you. Anyway, this is a feature I've been trying to get to work for a couple of years and I figured it out. So I'm gonna show you how to apply it to your GoPro footage with a couple of interesting scenarios and also to pull footage. Yeah, I mentioned pull footage in the intro. Well, that is where the focus, the focal point, actually changes the distance from the lens. And I'm gonna show you how to do that over here in DaVinci Resolve, like you can see my screen. Anyway, let's get into Resolve and take a look at what we're working with. All right, I got a clip. We go full screen, everything's in focus. Infinite depth of field from a GoPro, yay. We wanna make it look a little more cinematic, right? And here's a night shot that we're going to apply it to. And things are mostly in focus, but low light, the GoPro doesn't do well, and like the road sign isn't quite sharp, but we're gonna make it look a little bit better. And I'm gonna show you how to apply this to an adjustment clip and save it in the power bins. Lots of fun. So let's dive into our first clip. We're gonna go into the color tab here. And we've got nothing but one node. So we're gonna add a second node with Alt S. And then we're gonna go up into our search window. If you don't see it, you wanna get your FX, open FX, FX library, and then the magnifying glass icon. So we're gonna search for depth. And it's gonna come up, depth map. We'll just drag it onto our node. And you can see it's already figured out some stuff, but it's not great. What we're gonna do first is invert it, and you'll see why in a minute. We're gonna leave it on depth map preview. And this is the crux of the situation. This is probably the biggest thing you're gonna to need to pay attention to to get the best effect possible. All right, let's go back into Resolve. And you can see a bunch of other stuff down here, but we're not gonna mess with that just yet. What we wanna do first is look at our map here, and if I press Control F, it brings it up full screen, you can see that this isn't quite pure black. When we get to blurring it in a second, you'll see why that's important. So we're gonna press Alt S again, which creates another node, and this time in our search window, we're gonna type in lens, and we're gonna bring a lens blur, which pops up a couple extra blue lines here, right? First thing we need to do is convert the blue square, or connect the blue square to our top triangle there, blue triangle, and that's gonna give us our effect. So when I come in here and I uncheck depth map preview, it goes back to, to the regular appearance, but when I go full screen with Control F again, you can see it looks like garbage. It does not look like a realistic lens blur at all. And that has to do with the depth map that it's created so we wanna limit ourselves here, and this is the next big tip, to 2.25 or less. And now that I've clicked away, if we go full screen again, you can see that looks like a pretty decent lens on a fancy mirrorless camera. The effect looks real enough, the lens blur looks real enough, and here is where it doesn't look perfect, okay? You can see right around my GoPro, it's sharp. So it's not picking up quite everything the way we want it to, but I haven't found a fix for that other than to go over to our depth map and do a bit of post-processing. And then we can set our blur to about 396, 0.396. Next thing we wanna do is go to adjust our map levels and we can change the far limit, but let's go back and make sure we're on the preview. 
for our depth map. And you can see that changing these values changes things quite a bit. And I'm gonna switch this to faster to make things a little bit easier on my computer. And you can see that brings the black, brings the black right in the middle there, right? A little bit gray, a little bit black. So we're gonna set that to about 0.9 for our near limit. And if you mess with gamma, you can see that it might bring some detail back in, but we don't need to mess with it. Double click the word gamma, it'll reset. And that's fine. The other thing we can do is isolate a specific depth and maybe we wanna not adjust the map levels for this one. You can combine it, but I wanna show them specifically. And now our target depth, we can change where it's at. And we'll use this to pull focus later. You can play around with these settings all you want. We're gonna uncheck that, readjust our map level. Now you can see the post-processing has blurred things out a little bit. Let's go back up to our depth map preview and we've gone full screen. We still have a little bit of issue here, but it looks pretty good otherwise. It's pretty simple. I like to use just kind of the basics here. The real trick of it is to, in our lens blur, not go above 2.25 or 2.5 if you blow this out of proportion, you can see again, it, it looks like garbage. So we'll undo that. And then here we are. I mean, that looks pretty good right there. We're gonna set it to better for now and check our depth map preview. It's pretty sharp. Again, the post-processing will blur that out. Eh, it depends on what you wanna do with your footage, but I'm gonna leave that off for now. Recheck this. And just to show you, we're gonna set it to faster and go back here to our edit window. And you can see it, it plays along at real time. But if I go back to the color tab in our depth map node, and I change this to better, here's where things get interesting. It's playing back at six frames, five and a half frames a second, and it's about done. <laughs> it's done, done with my shenanigans. So to fix that, since we have better, what you wanna do is right click on your clip and then we're gonna come up here and select render cache color output. And when you do that, a red line will appear above your clip. And then if I zoom in, alt and scroll wheel, you can see it's rendering along. So once that's full, it should play back at normal speed. What Resolve is doing here is rendering the output from the depth map and the lens blur to files on your computer. So it's creating a temporary proxy. So while you're editing, you're not churning through CPU cycles and GPU cycles just to get that effect to appear on screen. It's doing it now. It's gonna take a couple of minutes, depending on the speed of your computer, of course, and then it'll play back normally because it's just playing an already figured out file for lack of a better term. Now that it's done rendering, we can go full screen and we can see that everything is in focus for me. Everything's blurred in the background. So we got our mask done real well, our depth map mask. That's basically what we used it for. And that looks good. So if we wanna use this on multiple clips, there are several ways to do that. One is to click on a clip and right click and say copy and then click on another clip, right click, and say paste attributes, or you can use Alt-V. When the window comes up for paste attributes, select color correction, hit apply. So now that that's all gone blurry, we can come over to the color tab, and we don't want it to be all blurry. So the first thing we're gonna do is for now, we're gonna set it to faster, and we're gonna check our depth map preview, and you're gonna see that only this area is in focus somewhat in focus on the bike, and then fading off in the distance, everything gets blurrier and blurrier. Well, we don't exactly want that, okay? We're not gonna use isolation for this. We are gonna use adjust map levels because if we turn it off, it only makes a slight difference, right? So we're gonna leave it on, but we can hit our reset icons right here for all three of these values, far, near, and gamma, and we wanna change our near limit. So we're gonna keep more in focus and this is sort of a preference or taste thing, if you will. So we're just gonna drag this until 
it looks about how we want it to. And remember, everything in black here is going to be in focus. Everything in white is going to be the max lens blur effect that we have in our next node. And all the grayscale is in the middle. So when I uncheck depth map preview, you can see now, and I'll go full screen, that the cars are in focus and the street sign and the sky is the blurry part. That's a little much. We'll go adjust that. We'll turn on our preview and then we're going to adjust this limit down a little bit further, about like that. Yeah, 0 0.78, 0 0.078 should be pretty good. Still a little much. Basically just the sky at this point. There you go. That's not bad. The other thing we can do is turn on our preview, bring it back up to where we wanted it, turn off the preview, come over here to our lens blur and change that 2.25 to like 1.75. And now when I go full screen, you see it looks much more realistic. This is trying to emulate a longer focal distance lens, something with a wider depth of field, so not so narrow. And I think that looks pretty good there. So now what we've done is we've created a near and a far effect, and we wanna save those for future projects. You know, if you're doing something where you're a constant distance from your camera in multiple shots, you wanna save that somewhere else. Same thing with doing longer shots like this, you wanna have that saved. So I already have it done, but I'm gonna show you how to do it. We're gonna go into our power bins and we can create a new bin and we'll call it demo. Okay, we'll click on demo, it's empty. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to our effects library and we're gonna click effects and we're gonna drag down an adjustment clip. Okay, and we're gonna make it a little bit bigger and we can go into file and we'll call it something clever like depth of field near. Okay, now you see the name change there? That's important, we're gonna need that later. So now we're going to control C on our clip and then we're gonna alt V and color correction is still selected from last time. Make sure that's the only thing. We're gonna hit apply. Now, if I disable this clip, just to make it very clear, go into the color tab, there it is, the three nodes. Not unlike the three shells, name that movie. <laughs> so what we've got here now is an adjustment clip for near and we can hold alt and drag it over creating a duplicate which we then want to rename far and there it is if i make it longer you can see it make this one longer you can see that okay well now if we control c and alt v this this being our long clip where we want everything to be in focus up to a far distance it's now been copied to the adjustment clip. So now what we can do is select both of our adjustment clips, click on our media pool, we're still in the demo bin, and drag and drop. Now, these two adjustment clips we created will be available in all your projects. If you don't see power bins, let's go fix that. To make sure your power bins are shown, the triple dot here in media pool, there it is, power bins. See, our power bins are gone. We'll click the triple dots, the ellipsis, if you will, show the power bins, there it is. It's back and in our demo, there we go. They've been saved. Now, let's say that you're a fancy color grader guy, right? A colorist, if you will, or gal. You wanna use the color tab, let's go do that now. So now we're in the color tab and you can see I already have a depth of field close and then one far. I don't know how they get the numbers there, but whatever, it is what it is. Over here in our gallery, if you don't see it, click gallery. We've got a bunch of bins. So we're gonna click in the blank space, right click, add power grade album. It gives it a name, we'll press F2. We'll change that to demo, press enter. Now we have a demo bin, it's empty. So we're gonna go over here, we've got, this is our far clip. So we're going to go to color, stills, grab still. And it's gonna create one there. And right underneath the numbers, you can click and type in the name of it. And we wanna call this far. And then we know that the other clip is going to be this one. Ha ha, I'm right, look at that. Now we can do the same thing, color stills, grab still. 
it's going to put it in here and we'll click underneath of it and call it depth of field close. So now we have our clip over here that's got nothing on it and we know that this one's going to be close. We can drag from here onto our image and poof, it makes it blurry and it saves all your settings. So now we have ways to create the effect. We have ways to save the effect. Now we need a way to modify the effect. You want to see how I did the intro, right? Let's do that. So for this demo, I've turned off the render cache color output. This is a little bug I found where if you turn off the render cache color output, it, uh, it kind of screws up. So you move the clip, move it back. And then when we go into the color tab, now we're good. Now we can click around and see what's in focus and what isn't. So the first thing we're gonna do is make sure that our depth map preview is turned on and we'll go all the way to the first keyframe, which is right here at the start of our clip. And you can see that I've got me in focus and a lot of things out of focus, including the seat and tour pack in front of me. That's pretty neat, right? And then we're gonna click forward icon there, the forward arrow, and you can see that this is gonna be the start of the transition or the pulling of the focus. You can see that the depth map has changed a little bit and Resolve is trying to read this from each video frame, which is pretty neat. Moving forward, we've now gone from 0.313 to 0.709. So it's a little bit closer and everything else has gotten more out of focus in the background. And then we're gonna stay there the rest of the clip. So if we wanna redo this, all I do is click the refresh icon there. It gets rid of all my keyframes and I want to go back to the start and we're going to change this to 0.313 and now you can see that everything's in focus and then we're going to go forward to where I am actually starting to get closer to the camera. You can see I've turned white there. It's pretty slow so we'll go up and we'll set it to faster again. That ought to make it a little bit easier. So I start walking forward right about there. So we're going to click our diamond icon. It turns red. We now have a keyframe. Then we're gonna go forward to about here, where I'm about as close as I'm gonna to get to the camera. And we're gonna drag this up nice and easy until I am black. See, now if I go too far, I turn gray again. So now we wanna go back and we're gonna to go to about seven-ish this time, 7.85, okay, that's good. And then we can stay there the rest of the clip. So now when I go back and I turn depth map preview off and we go full screen, you can see that the effect has been applied. And again, I wouldn't go above 2.25 on this. It really starts to get ugly quick, but that's pretty neat, right? Now we're in faster. You can see the playback. And as I get closer, I stay in focus, but the background gets unfocused. If we go back and play again, you can watch the background get blurrier. How cool is that, right? You can get a depth of field and thus more cinematic footage from your GoPro with not a lot of effort because once you've figured out what your style is and where you want the values, it's as simple as following the previous instructions and saving it in the power bins or in the power grades. And then you're golden. You just, you have access to it in all your projects. You drag and drop and boom, it's done. Now, obviously you might want to tweak things here and there or have a slightly stylistic effect going on. Who knows? It's up to you, but that's the effect. So if you liked this video, boop the like button and then go watch this one next. Yeah, YouTube picked that one for you. And I will remind you of the two mantras. One, you have a 100% track record of making it through a bad day. And two, do something nice for yourself every day. John out. <laughs>